Hi there, it's Tamara Doris, and today we're going to talk about three of the things that I see that hold a lot of real estate agents back. This, as everything else on this channel, for the most part, is going to apply to anyone in sales, but I specifically like to talk about real estate because that's the business I'm in. So the first mistake is a lack of clarity. Listen, as a real estate professor for over 20 years now, I see bright-eyed, starry-eyed students come to my class every single semester, super excited because they're going to get their license and they're going to get rich, right? Well, if you've been in the business for more than five minutes, you know that's not exactly how things go down, right? Feast or famine, and you know, hopefully you have more feast than you do famine, but maybe not. And I believe that a lot of that is a result of people not having a crystal clear vision on what they want. Now, when it comes to clarity, one of the things that we really have to have a grasp on is our why. You've heard that before. What is your why? What is your reason? But listen, if you don't have your goal, your vision attached to a reason, there's going to be days you're just going to not feel like getting up out of bed. It's like, why bother, right? It may interest you to know that a large majority of people are not motivated by money as the first driver. Now, I know that sounds crazy because everyone loves money, 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 money. I love money too, but it's not in and of itself enough to be a driver. And it really doesn't make any sense anyway. When you think about it, you know, you've got a pile of paper or, or numbers on a screen. What's the big deal about that? So what we have to train ourselves to do is understand and appreciate what the money does for us. So, you know, it may not excite you to say, I want to sell 50 houses this year. You know, yeah, that's a big, bold vision and I get it. But what's driving you to do it? What, what actually is making you say, yeah, I'm going to do it? If you're like, well, if I sell 50 houses this year, I'm going to be able to you know, move my grandkids here. Or I'm going to be able to take a month off and go to Europe next year. Or I'm going to be able to buy that house that, you know, that I just love, that I've had my eye on for so long. And now it's back on the market. right? So all of these things, they motivate us and they inspire us to reach our vision. But if we just go out there with a bottom line goal, I'm going to sell X number of units you know, this year. It's not enough. It will not sustain you through the times when it's like, you know, you've got a mad seller, interest rates are crazy, you don't have any listings, and you're just like, why bother? You got to have that vision. So having a clear vision, not having a clear vision is one of the first mistakes I see. So make sure you know exactly what you want and why you want it and how you'll know when you have it, right? Because if we don't have a measurement, and so that's why I really encourage agents I work with not to set a unit, like how many transactions closed, because first of all, the, the amounts um, vary tremendously, whether you're selling a house in California or in South Dakota, right? So having an income goal, in my opinion, or gross commissions, that's fine. But having something that is really solid, because I could tell you, well, guess what? Here's 10 new listings for you, but they're all like little pieces of land that are worth $5,000 each. That is not going to give you the kind of dream life that you're you know, trying to manifest and work towards, right? So get really clear on what your vision is for your business and attach it to the motivation, the drivers that cause you to want that, right? Because if you, you have everything you want, what are you going to do with it? And I think a lot of people fail in their vision setting or what I call ideal outcome in their creation of it because they're not attaching it to really, really strong personal drivers for whatever you know motivates you, but also when they fail to attach it to contribution. And I don't mean that you should be selling a lot of houses and make, just make a lot of money so you can give it to charity. That's not what I mean. I mean, charity is a beautiful thing. What I mean, though, is that if we spend our lives just for ourselves, those end up being really empty lives. But the lives that are spent for self and for others tend to be the most rewarding lives. So what contribution looks like to you is anybody's guess. For me, <clears throat> my contribution is being able to do things for my grandkids, knowing that I have savings accounts for them, um, when it's time for them to go to college, that's a huge contribution factor for me. I also am a big proponent of children's causes, uh, protecting children, you know, non-abuse and things like that. So, so that's to me contribution. But of course, I want to have a nice house. I want to be able to do things with my husband and my dogs and my kids and blah blah blah. So, just getting really clear, 
maybe maybe your vision is to make a ton of money in real estate so that you can then retire and open a bakery who knows right but that would be contributing because you would put great effort and love into preparing those muffins in the morning right and brewing that coffee so when i say contribution even just being in real estate is a contribution because you're helping people you know go from i got to sell this home to oh thank you for selling this home right so that is a form of contribution but it's got to be something near and dear to your heart or it really doesn't count because it won't keep you driven and motivated okay so number one mistake is not having a clear vision all right number two and this is a big one thinking it has to be hard so many agents think it has to be hard what does that mean it means you think you have to cold call against your will that's an important one it means you have to do anything against your will right dialing for dollars oh if you don't want to do it it's against your will um, paying buku bucks for leads that probably have been recycled right and then you get the lead and then you call them back and they're like don't call me anymore and you're like, oh, you came on my ad. And sorry, I thought you wanted a house. That's what happens, right? So often, maybe one out of 10 times it doesn't, or maybe one out of 20. But most of the time, that's what happens. So I don't know of a lot of agents who willfully, joyfully do that kind of business. However, however, I do know of agents who buy leads and then they hire an ISA, which is an inside agent, uh, or a, a, just a person, an appointment setter, and then they sit there and they do all the calls and they get leads from that. And that's perfectly fine, but it's a whole different animal. So in this mistake, what we're really looking at is people who think it has to be hard. In other words, no pain, no gain. Now that may be true in weightlifting and bodybuilding, but in real estate, it is absolutely not true. In fact, I teach the exact opposite. If you are not enjoying yourself and having fun, it's probably not going to, to reap a profitable reward for you. This is why I tell my agents, if someone is having a really hard time, I'm like, can you take a weekend off and go to Tahoe? Or they're like, going to go on vacation. I'm like, oh, good. You'll get some leads then. Because it's when we're at that level of, of calmness, contentment, and joyful expectation. That's, a, that's an actual frequency, right? When we're at that level, and that's what we're putting out into the universe, that's what's going to come back to us, that ease and that flow. But a lot of agents get into this business, they don't do very well, and so then they think, oh, I have to work harder. And when they go to work harder, whether it's knocking on doors or you know sending $1,000 worth of postcards out, that's force, that's pressure, that's pushing. And no matter how you cut it, that kind of pressure forms resistance, energetically speaking. So relaxing and doing the practices and if i'm not going to go through them right now but if you watch this channel or you're in my facebook group and if you're not you should be if you're in real estate um i have a whole slew of practices and i will just tell you i don't want to hold back on you here having some sort of meditative practice definitely having a visual i can say it visualization practice and if you haven't read any of my books where I talk about metacreating, it's literally in all of my books. And my books are mostly free on Kindle Unlimited. So look that up because it's a really, really vital practice. In fact, it's foundational to your success. If you are in real estate or sales of any kind, that's the ticket right there, right? We really, really want to make sure that we have that morning practice going. Why? Because morning sets up the tone for your entire day and your entire day, your waking hours, is when you're going to be making the contacts and connections, responding to calls, coming up with new marketing ideas, connecting with new people. And when you start your morning with that kind of practice, you're going to also get the, the, the intuitive hits that tell you, oh, maybe you should do that. Or maybe you should call that person. Oh, remember that neighbor you used to have? Why don't you give her a call? And then you call and she's like, we were just thinking about you. We couldn't find your number because we're thinking about selling our house next month. Happens all the time. If you have the intuition and if you pay attention to it. Okay. So mistake number two is the false belief that this has to be hard. It does not have to be hard. Do not misunderstand me and think that I'm saying all you have to do is sit in your jammies on the couch eating 
oh, I don't know, how about um, ranch flavored Doritos? Mm, had some of those recently. Those are interesting. And watching Netflix all day. That is not going to bring a bunch of listings in your lap. You have to do things. But the word have to, ugh, we get to do things. We get to connect with people. You know, and in magnetic marketing, it's all about fun stuff. If you like to do videos, and, and you know, it's funny you say, funny I say that to you, a lot of agents don't like to do videos, but for every agent who doesn't want to do video, there's an agent who always dreams of being in the spotlight. So, you know, they like to do it, but I understand there's a lot of agents that don't. So fine. We find other ways to be of service. We post information. We post blogs. We do other things that help homeowners and home buyers know that this is what we do for a living. And we do it with joy, right? That's the key. When I say it doesn't have to be hard, I don't mean you don't need to take some kind of action, but it should be action that motivates you, inspires you, excites you, and you have fun with it, right? I mean, you know, you could join um, a charity and just do fundraising for that charity in your community. And that's how you get out and you meet people. You don't have to say, hey, I'm in real estate. They know or they will know, right? But it doesn't have to be hard. That is such a big mistake that agents make, especially newer agents thinking it has to be hard. I have to push. I have to, I have to force. That's not how you become a top producer. And if it is, it's not going to be long lasting. It won't be you. It won't have the longevity of someone who's enjoying their business, building a business based on an abundant mindset, and joy and happiness and doing fun things that they like. Really, really important. The ones who force and push and force and push are the ones who have heart attacks, um, get immune diseases, digestive disorders because they're just all pushed out. So, you know, be careful not to fall into that mistake of thinking it has to be hard in order for you to have the success you want. OK. And number three, are you ready for number three? Number three, the mistake is thinking that the past has anything to do with the future. What do I mean by that? I mean that there has to be a certain degree of faith, belief, trust in your vision. Listen, Oprah Winfrey, um, J.K. Rawlings, Michael Jordan, Steve Jobs, all of these people who have gone on to do amazing things, if they were looking behind them saying, well, I, you know, I got attacked when I was a kid or I had an alcoholic parent or I grew up in, in the streets. If they were looking at their past, there would be no room for their future vision. The past does not predict the future. And the problem I see, and let me tell you, I think that this is a huge disease in the personal development space, if you want to know the truth. And I know I've been in this space a quarter of a century, so I know what I'm talking about when I say this. And, and if nothing else, you get this little tiny tidbit, it would help you greatly. And that is that so many people in the self-help space try to convince us that we need to go back and fix something or clear a block or change our subconscious beliefs. Yeah, we do all that. But if we put all of our focus on it, what do you think is going to happen? If we're constantly looking behind us, think about a car. If you're driving your car going that way, but instead of looking out the, the window, you're driving with the rear view mirror in, you might as well be going backwards. You've got to keep your eye on what it is you want not on where you've been. And I see so many people think, you know, and, and I love energy work and I, you know, I do it on my clients and my family and my friends all the time. I'm a big fan of it from a scientific perspective, mind you. But I see so many people in this space thinking, oh, I got to go fix my childhood. No, you don't. Your childhood is fine. Leave it lie. We can change your brain. We can imprint your subconscious mind right? We can do all of these things without going back and hanging out there. It's not necessary, yet that's what so many people do. And so the people I mentioned, the, the Michael Jordans of the world, the Oprah Winfrey's, the people that I mentioned, no matter what happened in their past, they didn't hang out there. They latched their lasso onto a dream. And the important thing is they didn't have any proof 
that that dream would come true. Do you get that? Oprah wanted to be, uh, you know, have a radio show or a news show or whatever she wanted to do. She was told she didn't have a face for TV. She had to be in radio. True story. Um, you know, think about all the greats. I, I mean, we're all great, but you know what I mean? Some of the most famous people in the world. And you'll, you'll realize they didn't have anything to hold it on to. Take old Kentucky Fried Chicken, Colonel Sanders, for example. He was going restaurant to restaurant out of the back of his car trying to get people to taste this recipe. He was 75 years old. Nobody was interested. But he had a vision. And so I made this third mistake about not thinking the past predicts the future because I really, really wanted you to understand how big it is. And I believe it is actually the number one mistake of not just real estate agents, but every single human being who is not in the progress of reaching their, their highest vision or have already done it. And that is somebody who doesn't have the vision that they can have faith in. You've got to have faith in it. And you can look at me and you can say, well, Tamara, I want to be a top producer. I really, really want it, but I just can't see it happening. And I'm like, why not? And you're like, well, because I came from this and no one in my family's are meh. I'm like, no, you're doing what I just said. You're using the past to predict the future. You've got to cut off that background. Forget about it. And you're like, how do I do that? This is where I came from. It's in my genes. No, it's not. Epigenetics tells us, which is a, a science, um, which has to do with the environment of a cell, but I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. Epigenetics tells us that it's our environment, the cellular environment that predicts our genetic codes. What does that mean? That means it's wherever we focus our attention and our emotion. Emotion is everything, you guys. It is the key to the kingdom, your emotions. But when we're living in the past, where do you think our emotions are? Not very good. So if we're worrying about what happened and how am I going to get ahead and oh, that can never happen for me, you're right. You are fighting for your own limitations and you are 100% right. Okay, we don't want that. So let's look at the other way. You find an image, you find an idea, you find a vision of what you want your business to look like. And I do not give one iota if there's not one iota or scrap of evidence to it right now. I don't care. In fact, the bigger the vision, the less evidence that you will find. Okay? So you hitch your trailer to that star, to whatever it is. Let's just say, hypothetically, you, wanna, you want to make $300,000 um, a year in real estate so that you can buy the dream house on the lake that you've always wanted and that you can send your kids to Harvard. Okay, let's just say that's your deal. That's a good driver, right? You're contributing, you're helping your family, you're probably gonna do a lot of charity and stuff like that. You're gonna give some of that money away and you know the road to get there is going to be through real estate. That's all you need to know. That is all you need to know right now. You have to have that vision of what that looks like and you have to be committed to that vision. Here's the key, even when there's no evidence of it here. You see, we have the past back there, we have the present right here, and we have the future right there. Now, in quantum physics, we know that that's all a bunch of BS. There is nothing, nothing linear about time. But in our, in our current matrix, in our third dimensional reality, it seems very real most of the time albert einstein showed us where it's relative time is relative and the 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 story he gave which i love is when you're sitting on a hot stove um a minute seems like an hour but when you're sitting next to a pretty girl an hour seems like a minute <clears throat> love that right forgetting all that but space time has nothing to do with it so the past is behind you you're sitting right here and the future is right there and so you're thinking, how do I get there? Hmm, what do I do? Hmm, and then we go to all these classes, especially at the beginning of the year, like, how am I going to do it? No, no, no. Nothing is wrong with that. Nothing is inherently wrong with setting goals and having benchmarks. I'm a fan of that. No problem. But we're not talking about that in a structural format. Right now, what we're talking about is your own mindset. And if you sit here from where you are right now and you look at that that you want right there and you're like, mm, I don't have it. It's not here. It's not happening. 
you have just committed the biggest mistake of all. And it is the inability of seeing that you can have whatever you want and believing it. It's the faith part. And here's what's really kind of cool. I think it's kind of cool is a lot of people who teach manifestation and all that stuff, um, they do it from a woo-woo perspective. Like, just tell the universe and the universe will know. And it's okay if you are a religious person or if you're a woo-woo person. I have no problem with that. But what I teach comes straight out of science. And so when we're talking about neuroscience and biology and quantum physics, absolutely 100% of the time, the people who have made the biggest achievements rewired their brain, right? Because none of us have a perfect childhood. So to some degree, they rewired their brain to have the vision they wish to have. And then they followed through. And this is where the heart comes into it too. And I believe quantum physics, you know, shows this. We don't have 1000% um, evidence, scientific evidence, but we do know that the heart, the vibrations of the heart span out uh, 500 times more than the vibrations of our brain. So electric, magnetic, so electromagnetic field. And that's what goes out and attracts it to us. But if you're sitting there and in your field, you're thinking about the past or you're worried about the future. Do you think either of those things will contribute to you making 300 grand in the next year? Absolutely not. It's going to keep you stuck wherever you are right this minute. Or if you pay enough attention to the past, it's going to catapult you back there. Right. And, I, and most people I know, that's not what they're interested in. So the number one mistake and the way to avoid it, the number one mistake is thinking the past and the present are going to predict the future. Only you get to decide the future you want. And every single thing that's ever been invented in this whole wide world started in the invisible in someone's mind and then became physical. And the way that the people did it, whether we're talking Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King Jr., um, whoever you want to talk about, they saw the vision in their mind and they moved toward it regardless of what evidence or proof that they had that it was going to come true. Think about Thomas Edison. He messed up, or he doesn't say he messed up. He says, I found 10,000 ways not to make a light bulb, which is a great attitude, the attitude you have to have. Can you imagine 10,000 times in, a, in an experiment trying 10,000 times? I mean, most people would say, yeah, that's not happening, dude. Go invent a telephone or something. But he didn't. He had a vision and he kept going. And so if you want to get philosophical and say, well, maybe the universe will reward you, um, you know, if, if you just keep trying, that's fine with me. I don't even, I don't even care if that's what you say. What I care about and what I know for a fact is that vision, that vision that you have in your mind and in your heart, you have to believe in it more than anybody else believes in it. I've had people, I've seen people in different coaching programs and I've, you know, I've spent more money than I would ever admit um, in a public video on coaching and mentorships and programs with like all the greats. And one of the things I've, I've always noticed is people being in these programs and, you know, say they pay $10,000 to be in a program and then they, they show up at the calls like this, fix me. Well, where's my money? I'm not successful yet. I've been in this program a month. What's going on? And I just cringe when I see that a coach, a program, a mentor, whatever is giving you the information, but it's up to you to implement it. And you cannot, at least I've never seen, not even Tony Robbins can put a vision in someone's heart unless it's there to begin with. I mean, great coaches can help you come up with a game plan. Great coaches can help you learn to believe in yourself. Great coaches can do a lot, but the one thing they can't do is give you your soul vision and then make you keep it in mind. So the faith part is all on you. Sorry, but that's your part. Okay. So those are the three mistakes. I, I went on a little longer than I meant to, and I'm sorry about that, but I get on a rampage because I see so many people think and say they want something great and wonderful and amazing. And I know they can have it, but they don't. So I just want you to know that whatever your vision is, whatever your, your goal is, that if you hold that vision in your mind and you're crystal clear on it, and you realize that it should be more fun and flow than go, 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 
and you hold the faith that you can have that. You see it crystal clear no matter what. It's there. It's right there. Just give it five minutes to catch up with you. You will start to see. You will start to see um, clues of success. You will start to see it. You will start to get serendipities. You will start to, to hear intuitive voices. But you have to do your morning practice for that, right? You have to start out with a calm mind. Okay, so I hope that has helped you. Look at the links below. Take my free class. Take my $27 class. We're getting ready. It's summer. If you want to join Magnetic Marketing, it's a six-month, three-month or six-month program. We'd love to have you in it. Um, mention this video and you will get a discount. I will be doing a different video on the discount coming up in the next week or so. But in the meantime, if you want to get a head start, let me know. Have a great day and thanks for watching.